Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. En let's just be childish and just sit in our chair and go. God, I am amazed. You know, Paul talked in several different places about how he stirred the people up, stirred their faith up, stirred them up by putting them in remembrance, by causing them to remember. And you know what I think we should do? I think it would be healthy if every day we took five minutes and had a think session where you just sat down and thought about something that God has done for you. And, and let's just be childish and just sit in our chair and go, God, I am amazed, amazed. And there's so many places I could go, but I just can't. Deuteronomy chapter 8 is so amazing. God said, I led you all the way in this wilderness these 40 years to humble you, to prove you, to test you, to see if you would keep my commandments or not. And he said, your shoes didn't wear out and your clothes didn't get old. And I brought you water out of a rock and I fed you manna. And I did all this that I might bring you into a land flowing with milk and honey. But when you get there, if you forget me, <laughs> you must remember. You say, what's this bucket up here? This is something that's extremely precious to me. These are the journals that I have kept. My daily journals of the dealings with God in my life and the things that God has done for me, the problems I've had, the tears I've cried, the joys, the breakthroughs over the last 30 years. I wasn't as diligent about it in the first maybe 10 years, but there's rarely a day that goes by that I don't write in these journals. These are my books of remembrance. The Bible says in Malachi that God's got a book of remembrance and that when people sit and talk about him, that he records it in his book. And I tell you what, I had quite a week going through these journals. September the 24th, 1983, we have a serious financial need. We need $200 by Tuesday to pay our charge bill. We have less money now than we've had in a long time. God is good. Great things are about to happen. The storm always comes before the calm. The clouds always hide the sun, but the sun is still there. Praise the Lord. I don't have any charges now because I'm able to pay my bills every month. Our ministry has zero debt. We've never borrowed a penny. But there was a day. And I want those of you to know who are in that day that I had that day. And many like it. But amazing, I'm still here. Hallelujah, everybody say, amazing. Okay, now this one just about did me in. This was in August of 1979, three years after I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I have a prayer list in the back of this. It says, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to provide the following things for us. And we receive them by faith according to your word. And we thank you ahead of time for them. Mom, Sandy, and Laura, that's me and my two daughters. Here's what was on my list. God, I need 12 washcloths. New sheets. I need a new skillet, a can opener, money for heater fans for both cars. Now you don't know how excited I was. See, I recorded after these when I got what I had asked for. And so on 8.22, I asked God for 12 washcloths, and on 8.29, my doorbell rang, and somebody that I didn't know, she came to my meetings occasionally, but I didn't know her, certainly she didn't know what was on my prayer list, she said, I hope you don't think I'm stark raving mad, but I thought God told me to bring you 12 washcloths. <laughs> Whoa! A 
Amazing! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. And this box is full of that kind of stuff. You know, you shouldn't mind being needy because when you're needy, it gives God an open door to do some of the most amazing things for you. When you get to the point where you can take care of yourself, then you don't need God to do that stuff for you. But that's all right, too, because then God can use you to be the one who takes somebody to 12 washcloths. I get to bless people all the time now. It's one of the greatest blessings in my life to be able to be a giver. I believe God for that for a lot of years. Now, the thing that was interesting about this was I had quit my full-time, well-paying job to prepare for what I thought I saw in my heart that was this ministry that God was going to call me to where I was going to go all over the world and preach the gospel. And here I'm believing God for my wash rags and a skillet. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. November 30th, 1989, two weeks ago, a lump was found in my right breast through a mammogram, and I, have, I had to have a biopsy. It turned out to be cancer. It was a type of cancer that invades your body quickly, so I had to have my breast removed. Today, I'm going to the hospital to have my right breast removed. It's been a really hard week. I've been attacked by demons from hell, fear, panic, loss of appetite, loss of strength. But I thank God for his word. Jesus delivered me from all these negative feelings at 5 a.m. on 11 29, 1989. And as I go to the hospital, I have peace and joy. I go in the name of Jesus. We're praying and believing that the cancer cells have not spread to the lymph nodes. I believe that I'll get a good report, no cancer cells anywhere and need no further treatment. Well, I didn't have to have any other further treatment. That's been 22 years ago, and I'm still here. But I remember how scared I was. And then I want to read this to you because I think this is important. Well, this is kind of funny. They said when I woke up, was coming out from under the anesthesia, I was preaching talking about Job, I prophesied to one lady, and I kept saying, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad. I went home to the hospital in two days, I didn't record this, but I stopped and did some shopping on the way home. I've been very uncomfortable, can't use my right arm, and I'm right-handed, so that's hard. Somebody has to do my hair, help me get dressed. I can't even pull my own underwear up when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> but I love God so much. I loved him no less at Calvary than I do in the glorious times. Strongly enough, I believe that I sense more love from him during these hard days than I have at any other time in my life. I must be getting a little taste of what it's like to fellowship with him in his sufferings. Is this okay? I'm not boring you, am I? All right. After the operation, I had two bags coming out of my side containing blood and water. <laughs> the Holy Spirit reminded me that when Jesus was on the cross, blood and water came out of his side too. I just took it as a word from God that I was dying to self. Now listen to this, because this is going to help some people. I asked God if I would feel like less of a woman because of having one breast gone. And right up out of my spirit came, no, because you're complete in Christ. So I want to say to any woman here, any woman watching, if you've had something like this happen to you, you've lost a breast or two or other body parts to some filthy disease, that doesn't make you incomplete. Because if Christ is your Savior, you're complete in Him. If you're single, you're complete in Christ. If you don't have any children, you're complete in Christ. If your husband walked out on you, you're complete in Christ. We can have confidence in who we are in Him. Amen?
This is my first message I ever put together on Strife. <laughs> typed it up, sat down, typed it up on my little typewriter right there. That is so cute, my little message on Strife. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, that was when I first got a revelation about how important it was to live in peace. Okay, we got to find this one. This one's good. This is the first fast that God ever called me on. And it was in the month of February, 1982. I began a fast. I fasted for 28 days. And during that time, I asked God to teach me how to love people. Because I sure wasn't very good at it. And... When I broke the fast, I recorded this. This is for Rick and Donna. Rick called me today to say that they'd purchased me a desk and that Steve and I would share an office in the new building. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but it sure is a blessing. But the really wonderful thing is, he also told me that God had laid it on his heart to ordain me. I know also this is God's will. God had placed this in my heart as a real desire, and I had been praying for it, but I had told no one. <laughs> you remember that when you ordained me? You know, our ministry started at Life Christian Center. Well, I started teaching Bible studies at home, in my home, and then I met them. I'd like them to stand up, and I just want you to give them a hand for them helping me get a beginning. Would you guys stand up let everybody see you? I don't know how many male pastors would have put up with me, I'll tell you. We were quite a pair. I was 36, he was 26, and we both thought we knew everything, and neither one of us knew a thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be about done here. See what else I got here. Mm. Oh, here you go. Here you go. Hand of Hope. That's our missions outreach. September the 28th, 1993, I had a dream last night that I was pregnant again. <laughs> and I already had one baby. And I'm thinking, how am I going to feed two babies? And then when I woke up, God showed me I didn't have to worry about it. Because the one baby that I already had was the new TV ministry, and the second baby was going to be an outreach called Hand of Hope, and the first baby would feed the second baby. <laughs> and now every year we take a percentage of what comes into the ministry, I think, we're able to put about $27 million a year into feeding the poor and helping the hungry and preaching the gospel and doing books. And we have 49 orphanages and, and literally, and you know, I, all I can say is I, I'm amazed. I don't even know how to tell you how amazed I am. I mean, we're, we're able to help people all over the globe. <laughs> you say, Joyce, this is nice. This is all about you. What about me? <laughs> Can I tell you something? If you would have kept a record of your life and every little skillet that God provided for you and those wash rags and the little breakthroughs and the doors that he opened for you and the favor that he gave you, when you have those bad days, you could get your box out too and get yourself amazed all over again. We forget what God has done for us. We forget. And then we think, yeah, yeah, I need this, and I need that, and I, need that. And I don't know why God's not doing anything in my life, and God's not moving. And if you want to know the truth, I think, although God loves us unconditioned, He understands us, I bet that kind of stuff's a little bit heartbreaking to Him. And then I went on to say some other things about Hand of Hope, and talks about Man, we're trying to find out from God if we should go on TV. We don't know if we're supposed to go on TV or not. God, should we go on TV? Man, we had a great meeting today in West County. Had 105 people show up and sold $337 worth of cassette tapes. <laughs> Amazing! Uh-oh. 
It's time to shake it up again. God's starting to settle to the bottom. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Maybe you guys ought to set one of these in your house to remind you every time you see it separated, I better shake it up again. <laughs> you know, I wish that I could tell you how blessed we are. This came to me in the mail a few weeks ago at the office. This is my high school class ring. You say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, when I graduated from high school 50 years ago, my father wouldn't buy me a class ring. And it was just so heartbreaking to me and so embarrassing to me because all the kids are showing each other their class rings and I didn't get one. He wouldn't let me have school pictures. He wouldn't buy me a graduation dress. And here this ring comes 50 years after I graduate. No name on it. Don't know how anybody even found out where I went to school. They had to know my first name, which is Pauline, and my maiden name. So they had somebody, God had to use somebody to do a whole lot of digging, and somebody went through the trouble to have me a class ring made. But you know what? This ain't about somebody. You know what God said to me? After 50 years, I'm still bringing restoration in your life. <laughs> Woohoo! Got me another memorial. I'm going to put it in my box. Chris Kane said to me at lunch today, she said, you don't know what I'd give to get a hold of that box. <laughs> you know what? God is no respecter of persons. And what he does for one person, he will definitely do for another. And here's the thing that I want to get across to you tonight. There are so many little things in our life that we think are coincidence that are God-ordained. And I want us to start seeing those things, and I want us to make a big deal out of them. Instead of making a big deal out of every little problem or every little inconvenience we have, let's make a big deal out of all the stuff that God does, even though it's little. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. These things happen to you all the time. We are so led by the Spirit and we are so unaware of it. We think, oh, how odd that I thought of that. <laughs> wow, what a coincidence. Isn't that unusual? Hmm. No. It's God right smack dab in the middle of your life. And you got to have a little country in you to say smack dab in the middle of, but I got a little in me. So it's God right smack dab, right full on, right up in the middle of your life doing miracles every day, and we could at least have the reverence to be amazed. Amen? I am amazed that I have friends. Look at me, I want to tell you something. There was a time when I was homeless. I was pregnant with my first child. My husband had left me, was living with another woman. I couldn't go back home because my father was a sexual abuser. I didn't have any friends. Do you understand that? No friends. My hairdresser said, you can come and live with me and my mother till the baby's born because I had to quit work at nine months. I didn't have him for another four weeks. That's the oldest one sitting right over there. <laughs> Was sick when I got done having the baby, didn't take care of myself. I gained a half a pound the whole time I was pregnant. Everything had been depleted out of my body. I had nine cavities in my mouth after I gave birth to the baby. I got boils on my body because I had an infection. And when I came out of the hospital with him, I had no idea where I was gonna go. And my first husband had come to see the baby that he kept saying wasn't his <laughs> while he was living with this other woman. And I would drive by the house where they were living every morning on my way to work. I know what it's like to have pain. I know what it's like to feel like your insides are coming out. I know what it's like to be devastated and feel like your life has been destroyed. But I want to tell you something. I also know what it's like for God to work in your life and for Him to give you double for your trouble. 
Can you believe that somebody I didn't even hardly know had to take me into their home? I didn't have enough money to even go to the doctor and find out what these boils were on my body. <laughs> well, I got some friends now. <laughs> How many of you would take me in if I needed a place to go? <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> I didn't have a place to live. <laughs> me and you, David, I carried you out in your little red suit. I was so scared of him because I hadn't had any kind of training. I, I, I tried to give him a bath and I wouldn't even hardly touch him. We didn't have any books. We didn't, you know, I didn't, I went through a clinic. Didn't have any money to do it right. But now, <laughs> he's running all over the world doing mission work. And God has used him to start all kinds of stuff all over the globe. We didn't have a great start, but we're having an okay finish. Yeah. Amen. You say, well, if he's not Dave's natural born son, why is his name David? Because that's what God put it on my heart to call him. And I didn't even know Dave yet. Amazing. What do you think? Oh, come on, somebody shout in here tonight. I'm telling you what, God is all over you. He's in you, he's around you, he's over you, under you. He's chasing you, following you. <laughs> well, I just don't know if I can make it one more day. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We should be amazed. Do you know that right now Hebrews 1.3 says that God is upholding, maintaining, guiding, and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. That means the sun stays there because God tells it to. The moon stays there because God tells it to. The stars aren't going to fall on our head tonight because God is holding them up with his word of power. The ocean doesn't go any further than the grains of sand because God commanded it to stay there. Amazing! And I've got more statistics and on and on. I mean, it, in the Andes Mountain, there's a, there's a bat that's the size of a raspberry. 10,000 species of birds. 900,000 different kinds of insects in the world, and we just step on them. 3,000 different kinds of snakes, and most of us don't even like them. I mean, our God is so amazing. It's just so amazing, amazing, amazing. But you know, just to end, I was thinking, what would be the most amazing thing that I could talk about? And I thought, well, I guess we'd have to talk about amazing grace. If we were going to talk about anything amazing, we'd have to talk about amazing grace. I guess the only way you can really define grace is amazing. It gives us everything and costs us nothing. Jesus paid for everything that we have. It's a free gift from God to people who don't deserve it. It forgives our sins no matter how many they are or how terrible they are. God not only forgives our sins, he forgets them and remembers them no more. No more. <laughs> Grace justifies us and makes us just as if we had never sinned. No matter what you've done, you stand before God tonight totally clean, just as if you had never sinned, only by the grace of God. By grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. No man can deserve the grace of God. There's nothing like it in the world. We can't even understand it. It takes our sins and gives us God's righteousness. It's God's power to given to us as a gift, enabling us to do what we could never do with ease. You know how many things that God enables you to do? 
And then sometimes we have the audacity to judge other people because they can't do what we do. <laughs> we better start saying, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Grace makes us a joint heir with Christ. We get what he paid for. Grace meets us where we're at, but it never leaves us where it found us. Grace has always taken us somewhere in our life, always changing us. Let me ask you a question. How could we be hopeless? <laughs> God uses some of the most unusual people. <laughs> grace chose Paul, who was a persecutor of the church, to preach the message of grace. He chose Peter as one of the greatest apostles, even though he denied Christ three times. He, held a, he chose a half out of her mind, weird voiced, odd personality woman who'd been abused from Fenton, Missouri, to preach the gospel by television to two thirds of the world in 60 languages. Amazing. Amazing. You know, it's really important for all of us that we stay full of hope. And one of the ways that we can do that is to stir ourselves up every day by reminding ourselves about all that God has done for us. We need to live amazed at the goodness of God. You know, God's creative handiwork is all around us and all we need to do is look at it and think about it with awe and wonder. old escaped on her own from sex trafficking. She lives on the streets. She was rounded up by vans that travel around and steal these children. They were actually weighing the little girls so that they could ship them out of the country. And she was able to sneak away and escape. She ran to the tent that you see behind me where we feed the children and ask for safety. So we're able to feed Farisua here every day. We're able to grant her just a little bit of safety and to help her in any way that we can to tell her about Christ and just to love on her a whole bunch because she's an awesome little girl.